there are rankers, there are toppers, and then there is somebody who is rank one. I am Dr. Sandeep Sharma, and I welcome you to this special session where we have Dr. Malab Thakkar with us. Dr. Malab has got INI SS 2022 December exam rank one. He has got rank one in pediatric hematology, oncology, and uh, it's a pleasure to have Dr. Malab with us. So, uh, welcome, Dr. Malab. Thank you, sir. So, you have joined uh, at uh, PGI, I suppose, or yes. DM? Yes, sir, I have joined. So, Dr. Malab, can you just share about like what was your background and uh, where you did your MBBS, your MD, and how did you prepare? Like, what, what was the entire timeline that you followed? So, sir, I'm basically from Ahmedabad, Gujarat, and I did my UG from BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad. And I think the fascination from PGI came from my UG times itself. Watching you taking interviews of MD toppers that time, I think that all motivated me for PGI pediatrics. So I started that time PGI exam itself needed a different preparation. We had multiple choice questions. We had to come to Chandigarh to give exam. So I had a separate preparation. I prepared for that. And luckily I got pediatrics in my first attempt. So then came three years to Chandigarh to do my MD and it was the most, I can say the most amazing time. And there only itself in the second year, I developed interest in hematology. And then subsequently after completing my MD, I took a break, prepared properly, sincerely, and then came back. Great. So another three years you are going to be here. Yes, sir. So, uh, Dr. Malav, can you just uh, enlighten, how did you plan your study? At what time during your MD you felt that now this is the branch I'm going to go in for, number one. And secondly, how did you prepare for it? Yeah, so we had uh, one month postings in pediatric hematology. So one was in my first year, other was in my third year. So I think I started inclination in my first year itself, but sincerely I thought about when I was in third year. I did not had a specific preparation that time for hematology. oncology at that time I was just focusing on my basics reading Nelson and preparing well the other, all the specialties but yeah I had a separate inclination so I just started reading Lenzowski just a bit in my final year after completing I realized that I need a more focused preparation for DM so at that time I came across to know that uh, there is a course by you in prep ladder SS and then I joined the course. So yeah, my preparation for DM started at that time after completing my MD. So my first preparation was first three months. I would just watch the video system wise and I'll make notes. So that was my first motive to have a good notes. And obviously your notes are the simplified simplest version of Nelson. So I just uh, made sure that I made good notes that time during first three months. Then I added to my notes with the question bank mm -hmm. and then gave the mock exams when it came. So yeah, this was my preparation time. Great. And so uh, what were the resources that you used? Primarily you said you used Nelson and Lenzowski. So okay. any anything apart from that you found helpful? Yes, sir. So first and foremost is Nelson, like Nelson is the first book without Nelson, you can't go further. So Nelson is definitely the first book and hematology also I read majority from Nelson. Lenzowski, I, I did not read that much for hematology. Mm -hmm. Hemat extensively I read from Nelson. Oncology part I read from Lenzowski first and then like this was my fourth attempt. So after giving my two attempts, I felt that I'm still lacking a bit. Mm -hmm. So I also read Piso to fine tune my preparation and some research articles of repeat questions mm -hmm. for, from AIMS and PGI. So this was my preparation, sir. Great. And uh, like you were following prep ladder, as you said. Yes. So apart from the videos and the mock exams that you were giving, uh, did you find the question bank and the practice questions also to be of benefit? Yes, sir, definitely. Like the current paper style are uh, more towards clinical conceptual questions and the question bank was most of the questions 8 to 9 out of 10 questions were clinical based case based scenarios so that helped fine tuning because reading is not just important applying this what we have read and through solving questions i won't say them questions also they are clinical scenarios and you have to solve them so they are more of clinical scenarios and they are definitely helpful dr malab there is another uh, trend i'm seeing these days what is happening these days is uh, like uh, there are people who are entering into MD like 
first year joining and they are thinking on the lines okay i should be you know starting my preparation for entrance exams what's your take on this like it's a very contentious issue should you start to do mcqs from the very first year itself or you should be you know focusing on the clinical management learning the skills first and then gradually making the transition what's your take on that Yes, sir. Definitely, first year is not the time to think about DM. I think you should just focus on MD when you have just entered. Mm-hmm. You just can see what is going on in the field. You just get used to the atmosphere, environment of pediatrics. Definitely, the skills. I think just even if it is your first month, the observation will help you gain a lot of knowledge. So the skills observation you have to get that, and then. I think if you read Nelson, then 60 to 70 percent of your DM preparation is done if you have read Nelson thoroughly in MD time. So if you just do that, then also it is well and good. That means you have taken a step for DM without actively doing it. So I think that is what I would suggest. So all those MD and DMB students who are listening to this interview, please make note that Dr. Malab is saying that end of the day, we are going to be pediatricians, we are going to treat the patients, right? Solving MCQ is important, it is needed, obviously, but not at the cost of you neglecting your clinical skills, because uh, whatever time you get in MD or DNB, that time again, I think it's not going to come back again. So try to strike that right balance between reading and learning on the bedside. There is no substitute to bedside. Uh, Dr. Malab, uh, you know that the competition is heating up and we see that the number of SS seats are not increasing that proportionately compared to, uh, you know, the number of MD and DNB seats which are increasing. Yes. So if there is somebody who says that, okay, I want to get into DM, say DM pediatric hematology or DM pediatric hematology in the very first attempt, uh, what is the time he or she should get serious about it? Yes, sir, uh, I think uh, after MD in six months also it is doable. It is not like that if you plan your studies accordingly, then uh, mm-hmm. I think it is doable. Six months is enough time to crack a DM exam, provided you have read your Nelson thoroughly in MD. Mm-hmm. So with that, if you, I, as I said, if you make notes and quest, solve question bank in three to four months, mm-hmm. I think that part is taken care of. Mm-hmm. And I always feel you should always read general and specialty simultaneously because it is like refreshing. You will have two parallel things going on. So specialty part is always refreshing. General is a bit more extensive. Specialty is narrowed. So you can always club the two. And I think in those three, four months, you can complete a, one good reading of both mm-hmm. preparing notes of both of them. Mm-hmm. And in the next two months, you can again solve MCQs. You can do your question bank and you can give the mock exam and two more revisions and I think it is. And if somebody is not getting time to uh, read Nelson, like MD and DNB is very hectic. It's yeah, very yeah, I can understand you can not, you should also not try actively to cover Nelson cover by cover. It is not possible. We know that. So I always feel that those, the cases which you see during your, your MD time, those you should try to read from Nelson. Otherwise, your notes and lectures are sufficient to cover Nelson. So just stress on the fact that don't try actively to read Nelson cover by cover. Just the cases which we have saw, you should try to read that and then rest uh, your notes will be, I think, sufficient. Great. And uh, like it's a clarification from my end. Yes, Dr. Malaf has talked very nicely about the videos and the notes which we have made at Prepladder SS for pediatric preparation, for DM preparation. But end of the day, uh, these notes are to be read in conjunction with Nelson. They are simplifying Nelson and the related aspects. They are not a substitute to your Nelson reading, your own reading. Because it's not a uh, super specialty exam is a totally different game. Unless you have clinically examined, unless you have worked and read yourself, a course per se is not going to help you. Yes, of course, uh, we have tried hard that the course is beneficial to you. And uh, uh, Dr. Malav, your views on, suppose somebody has already given a couple of seats, like you have got INISS and you said that you have been preparing for it and giving the exam multiple number of times. Often a scenario arises where somebody gives and he or she gets a rank in the top 10, but they are not getting a seat of their choice. So they are in a dilemma, should I drop again or should I go in for, you know, joining whatever seat I'm getting? Your views on that. It's a very controversial thing, but your views on that. So, sir, everybody has a different timeline. Basically, when, till when can you push yourself to a limit? But I would always feel that uh, you should be clear which specialty you want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
after doing a good general SRC for a few months, once you have confidence in your pediatrics aspect, you should try to work in that specialty in which you want to do. I think that will benefit in both ways. You will develop interest towards the specialty. You will have that motivation to crack the exam. You will to give the exam another time. And that will give you experience once you join also. So I think you can follow that. That is what helped me. So you can try that. I, I, I totally agree. I think it's a very uh, individual decision. This is something you cannot, you know, compartmentalize or simply say ki, ah, this works for A, so this will also work for B. So you have to find out uh, what works best for you, how much of a risk taker you are, what are your financial, your family situations, shadi karna hai abhi ya ruk sakte hai. All those things you have to keep in mind. See, see we we'll stay in a society and we have to live according to uh, the, the surroundings are uh, all the considerations have to be taken care of. So it's a personal decision that you should take, right? Another controversial aspect I need your views on. A lot of people, many times students want to take MD medicine, but they fail to get a seat of their choice. So they end up taking up MD pediatrics with this thing in their mind that probably they will be moving into adult DM later on. Again, your views on this. Yeah, so we have uh, my first choice was pediatrics, but we encounter a lot of colleagues, juniors, seniors who go through this. But I think once you accept that this is what I'll do and uh, I don't think kids will give you that opportunity to get, uh, you know, if you will feel that uh, I made a mistake. I think treating a kid and discharging uh, happily a kid, I think that is the best feeling. So I think many of them can change their viewpoint after three years of their MD. And uh, now the specialty is opening up like... Uh, Pediatrics is as extensive as MD. Like, yeah, people say that it is a miniature version of adult. I think uh, it is not like that. You should not think like that. The disease, the systems, the, the variety of cases which we have in pediatrics. I won't say it is at par at medicine, but yeah, with the coming lab advantages with the diagnostics, the spectrum is increasing. And I think with the specialties coming, people will not think or stress over it. True. Any specialty which adult is having, pediatrics is also having nowadays. Mm -hmm. So it is just a matter of few years that things will definitely change. Again, it's a personal decision. But uh, I personally feel and I think Dr. Madhav also agrees with me that children, once you treat a child and you successfully treat the child uh, and you see that smiling child's face, that always stays with you. And it sometimes whenever, in, even in the gloomiest of times when you're in at a certain low phase in your life, you look back, those faces come to you and they are like saviors for you. They are like, they make you think that you are doing something good. Like, so see, if you want to do an adult super speciality, it is going to be slightly tougher if you are going through the neat SS route. As for INISS, yes, the route relatively is simpler. You can target the particular speciality and go for it. But um, it's always better to have an open mind. Be flexible when you have joined MD. Uh, try to give the best in whatever branch you have joined. A couple of months, couple of years into your uh, residency, you would have much more clarity and you yourself will be able to take a decision uh, whether you want to go into the adult super specialities and the pediatric super specialities. Please understand that pediatric super specialities or they are technically called as subspecialities. They are very, very undersaturated, except for some degree of saturation in neonatology. There is a lot of scope in the coming years, a lot of tertiary care centers opening up, a lot of medical colleges opening up. You will have tremendous potential in all those DMs in pediatrics as well. So you need to take that leap of faith. And uh, Dr. Malav, uh, in the end, you have joined there. Uh, Dr. Malav has just told me that he uh, took a off from there to give this interview especially he came over here so you you are going back there how is life now different as first first you were doing md over there and now you are a dm resident over there yeah sir so i think a lot of it is similar <laughs> the environment is similar so that is a big advantage for me yeah just it's less of physical work compared to md more of responsibilities but yeah i'm definitely enjoying this new phase so dr malab uh, you'll be you have any plans after this like you must have something in your mind that this is the branch I want to move into. Yeah, so one thing I thought about that uh, the BMT, bone marrow transplant fellowships are, there are one year fellowship programs. So I have not yet completely thought, but I might do it some 
sort of interest in, into the transplant, uh, yeah. pediatric transplant. Uh, yes, yes. Great, great to know that. So, and any advice you would like to give to your juniors who are to, in a summarized form? Yes, so I just want to say that don't stress about DM during your MD time. And uh, it is okay if you join six months after, one year after, two year after. At the end, below your name, it will be DM so and so. And no one will write after six months or after two years. So don't stress about it. Because of the increasing competition, I think there is a lot of stress going on. True, true, true. So, so Dr. Malav is saying a very important point here. Often what happens is, uh, see, being a faculty, I also get those... Uh, messages from students who have tried really hard, given their all, and still they haven't done well. You need to understand that it is not a reflection upon you. It's just that you had a bad day and probably somebody was better prepared than you. So you can always have your day later. Uh, exams come every six months. And uh, once you are into your uh, dream branch, it doesn't matter whether you, you know, uh, you got the branch immediately after MDDNB or you took a gap of one year or so. Life is long and you will have a lot of time for that. What's important is you should be moving towards your goal and you should give your best. And uh, Dr. Malav is a classic example of that. He's done excellent. I have known Malav for many years now. I've seen him evolve. He is technically also my junior at PGR. But uh, now he's living his dream. So Dr. Malav, any uh, last, you know, you would like to dedicate this to your family, friends? Yes, sir, definitely. Without that support, I would have not thought like you need that support because after you have secured something respectable in your life, you still want to go further. I think you need that sense of security yeah, that someone is backing you. And definitely my family, my friends, my juniors, seniors, definitely they all supported me through this phase. And this phase is a bit tough, like after MD and between getting a DM seat, this phase is definitely tough. So you need positive people around you. And yeah, definitely. That was a great support. Great, great. It was lovely uh, chatting up with you. It was a more of an informal meet, uh, yeah. informal interview we had. Uh, I don't have a coffee hamper to give you. <laughs> right? There is no rapid fire round here. You've already done that. So uh, it was wonderful talking with you, Dr. Malak. Same here, sir. And I Thanks hope a lot. all those who are listening to this, they will be inspired by you. And uh, they will note down the points, the suggestions which Dr. Malak has shared with you. Thank so, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.